Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you a fun um, and interesting video today. Um, we're going to tackle um, kind of a sensitive issue when it comes to the uh, miniature wargaming community and that is 3D printing and 3D printing as it regards to replacing existing slash no longer available kits um, and where I fall on that. Because um, it's a very interesting topic, as you know, 3D printing is becoming more and more prevalent in um, the miniature hobby world and um, pretty much on a daily basis. Um, printers are becoming more accurate, less expensive, files are everywhere. It seems like every week there's a new company um, offering a subscription service um, for monthly bundles. Um, um, and I don't say that in any kind of derogatory way or anything like that. The, problem, the only problem I have is not being able to subscribe to all of them because the, the quality of stuff coming out these days is absolutely staggering. Um, I do however um, fall in an unusual category in that I don't actually agree with the idea of copying things that already exist. So I'm not a huge fan of straight up scans and copies of models that already exist from other companies. Um, I'm of the opinion that if that company spent money developing and producing those miniatures, then that should be the place that you go and buy them. Um, and if you can't afford them from those companies, then of course, you know, get access to them. That's just, this is how I feel. Um, having said that, if that company used to produce a miniature and it is no longer available, even though they still have copyright claim to us, their IP, I feel kind of morally free to search for and download and print files of that nature and um, it's a tough one though my brain goes back and forth as to kind of the pros and cons and the what's right and what's not right about topics like this all the time and um, it's a funny old one it's a lot of gray areas and um, so today in the video today i thought there was a really nice kind of balance so i'm going to be producing some beautiful crude narlock writers and um, and basically how it works is an amazing 3D sculptor called Felix the Crazy. That is his name on Cults 3D. If you want to check him out on Instagram, it's the same folks the crazy and or Felix the Crazy, apologies. Um, but the E and the H are slipped around in his name and I don't know why. But he uh, makes some absolutely amazing um, kind of crude alternative. He calls them cannibal chickens, but we all know what they are. And and unlike someone who just made the entire miniature, he gave us the Narlock riders from the waist down and cleverly designed them so that the plastic crew kit just plunks right on top and you're, you're straight away able to uh, kind of customize and convert and add bits to them. And, and I found this to be a really kind of pleasing thing because you're, you're kind of appeasing both things. I'm getting the crew Narlock riders that I wanted and obviously I can no longer get the riders so I can't support the company that produces them. Although I can buy and have to buy the uh, crude from the torso up and use all of those parts. So you're kind of getting a little bit of yin and yang, a little bit of meat in the middle kind of thing, which I thought was super cool. And like I said, it feels crazy. Uh, he's uh, an amazing 3D sculptor. I will leave links to all of his bits and pieces below. And um, his Instagram is called 3D Shop. And if you do not have a 3D printer and you are interested in uh, getting any of his sculpts, and he does also sell them from his Etsy shop as well. So I will link that in the, in the comments below. I've never met uh, Felix the Crazy. I'm not sponsored by Felix the Crazy. I just think he's a, a quality guy who does quality stuff. Um, so without further ado, and let's get into the video. Okay, guys, like I said, I got these 3D sculpts from Felix the Crazy on Cool 3 d And these are the uh, three poses that I got out of the Narlock Riders. And as you can see, like I was talking about in the description, it's a fully done um, from the waist down of the rider. But then it's up to you to build the actual rider himself. There's lots of nice harness around the Crutox rider as well, which gives you the opportunity to glue any of the spare bits on from the plastic kits to really flesh it out if you want. I really appreciate the effort you went to in giving us the three different sculpts so that we can do a squad. Um, and them not just be duplicating the same miniature over and over again, which can be a problem with 3D sculpting. Um, you can find this absolutely stunning file for something you want in your army, but if you want multiples of, they're all gonna look the same over and over again. So I do really appreciate this. So um, a quick bath in a boiling water um, to soften up the supports to make them uh, easier to remove. Um, and we are left with these three 
cannibal chickens is what he calls them. Go in with a scalpel just to remove any of the uh, leftover support material. Um, trying your best not to do any damage. Obviously yeah, resin material is uh, still quite a soft and brittle material, it being like resin. For anyone who's never worked with resin before, I kind of equate it to the consistency of like a chuba chuba lolly that like it's almost like slightly harder glassy material where it can crack and it can break so you got to be a little bit more careful with it okay i then went into my box of bases and found an appropriate sized base to get three of them and when i'm attaching resin 3d prints to plastic bases i often want to use a bit of cork um, it helps the miniature adhere to the base just going from that like smooth plastic onto smooth resin you don't get that best bond you can't do it don't get me wrong i just prefer to secure it a little bit tighter especially something like this which is um, standing up on two legs so there's only two points of contact on quite a large miniature on the base and that makes me a little bit nervous so i usually add something like a bit of cork which is a super porous material so when you add this to super glue um, and the middle miniature glued onto that it's super super hard it's almost i don't know what it, how hard it bonds or why it bonds so hard but it does the job really really well so I basically got all the 3d prints cleaned up on their base like this and then it was time to move on to the uh, plastic components um, of the build so we put them to one side and we bring in our standard crude carnivore squad from games workshop um, this kit is uh, it's stamped on the sprue that is from 2000 so we're talking a kit that is 22 years old currently so obviously it's it's quite a dated kit so the scopes of the actual narlocks are actually slightly better than the croup rider so it was really nice to have something like that so um once i uh kind of mashed the two pieces together and um, i was quite happy with the result as you can see they fit like a dream any little gaps that are at the back you can fill with green stuff putty or i just tend to uh, put an extra dollar of super glue in and um, just to fill out any slight gaps added a bit of kind of ground texture so some of those plastic leaves from games workshop and then i got a pva glue and sand um, a company sent me out a beautiful kind of swampy mat and that's what i want to play these guys in so i want to try and get their bases um, looking as similar to that mat as possible so i'm gonna go for a kind of really dark kind of earthy swampy kind of color nothing too fancy no like water effect or anything like that just few browns and a nice dry brush that's all <laughs> okay with the bases all done up we're going to give them a quick spray and we're going to use my standard method which is an all-over spray of chaos black and then a heavy zenithal of gray sear once that's applied it's time to start coloring so i went for a kaolin green um, to do the crutox rider simple job just to get his skin done as you can see, half the miniature is already a Kaolin green. It's because I thought I'd press record and started painting and I hadn't. So I had to go back and uh, try and use the uh, movie magic to, to uh, show you an angle where you couldn't see the blue I'd already done. But of course, then in editing, I gave it away by talking over it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I basically was banging my head on what colors to do crew for a while. My brain kept going to the like dark green mount and light green crew. And I was like so bored by that. One of my friends reminded me that there's so many different color schemes you can do for them. So I went a little bit crazy. So even when it came to the actual Crutox itself, I jumped on with Volopus Pink Contrast. I made it this bright pink slash magenta kind of uh, skin tone. And then about halfway through applying the pink, I was like, Blue Rider, bright colorful mount. Oh, I'm just doing Avatar, whoops. Um, which I'm okay with. Avatar is an absolutely fantastic movie. Um, and it's a great inspiration for armies like this. But yeah, I just took my time and applied the uh, Volopus Pink Contrast um, to all of the body, trying not to hit the harness or the beak or anything like that. That's right, these miniatures have beaks. <laughs> Gorgrunt the fur was used on all of the straps and the saddle of the miniature. quick and dirty job contrast do really make laying the base coats down on miniatures so quick and easy we're gonna come back and layer it all up in a minute so it doesn't really matter how kind of neat tidy we are with one part or not the other part so 
it's quite a, a lot of fun. Give yourself kind of an hour of time to sit down in the evening or in the afternoon if you get a break. Um, and you can get a kind of substantial amount of work done getting models base coated, so that's, that's always good. Black Templar Contrast is where we're going to do the uh, the beak and the spines of the miniature. That goes for the spines coming off the back of the rider's head and the spines coming out of the back of the mount's head. Of course, the mount and rider from all being from the same species, just different variants. They are all considered crude. I did quite like the uh, color scheme I invented along the way with the pink and black. It really did stand out and look really cool. The last thing we're gonna do for base coats is we're gonna throw an iron hand steel all over the metallic parts. You can notice any dark metallic that you like here. It's always when I'm getting to the metallics that the camera's like, oh, I'd rather focus on his knuckles than the miniature. Mm, don't know why that is. It kind of annoys me during every editing process, but what you gonna do? Um, so metallic parts, um, everywhere there's metallic. He's got some kind of grenades that I strapped to his harness and pistols and stuff touched to his saddle. So once all those base coats are on, it's time to throw on a Seraphim Sepia wash just to bring some more earthly tones back into everything. Um, and help us with the protections. It's gonna add like a protective coat over all the contrast that we've done so far. Stop any chipping or anything like that. Now, I've only been showing you guys one of these on camera, but I am actually currently painting up three of them all at the same time. So at the end of the video, I will show you what a full squad of them does look like on the table. Okay, guys, while we wait for the shade to dry on my miniature, I'm going to try and get it uh, based up as well. And minus the graph tough, we'll leave those off till the uh, very end of the miniature. Um, I just want to take this time to thank each and every one of you guys for the continued support on my channel. For all you guys who have liked my videos, dropped comments, or subscribed, um, thank you so much. That means the world to me that you uh, take the time out of your day. And an extra special thanks to all of my Patreons. Um, you guys are making the 365 project um, a reality. It was a crazy pipe dream a few months ago, and I didn't really know how it was going to go. Um, but so far, I am quite pleased with the results. We are heading in the right direction. A lot more work to go, and a lot more building to be done, but um, I think we can do it. So thank you guys so much for all your continued support and let's get back to the video. Okay, with the shade dried and the base of the miniature done, this is currently where we're at. Now it's time to bring a bit of life back into the skin color. So we're gonna go for a Screamer Pink. And we're gonna do a very quick layering job on the skin of the Crutox. After the camera, of course, focuses in. Like I said, this miniature is very well defined and um, the gaps in all its musculature are easy to pick out. Um, so it shouldn't be a problem um, to do a quick layer job on the miniature. Next, we're gonna go over to Sotec Green and we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the Crute Rider, just layering it up, hitting those higher points, making the blue uh, pop a little bit more than it is now. It's gone to a little bit of a dull state. And even now, after both of these colors have dried, I thought they sat a little bit more on the dull side for what I was after. Um, like I said, I realized that these guys can be any color. Um, so I really wanted to hit that bright and vibrant feel with them. So I'm gonna introduce a few of the Green Stuff World Intensity inks in a few minutes. Um, just back over the skin colors um, of this mount and rider. And I think that really helped to make the miniature pop Definitely looks like some sort of alien creature that you'd see stalking through the jungles. And I basically thought the models looked quite flat. If you ever see anything like lizards and stuff in jungles, um, like big geckos and stuff, their their skin always looks like a little moist. Um, it doesn't look kind of dry and deserty like kind of desert lizards or reptiles would be. So I wanted to try and incorporate that. So that's why I tried the inks out. And you'll see the result in a few minutes, and you can let me know whether you think it worked out or not. So Morn Frank Brown was brought in just as a quick layer job on the leather straps and the saddle of the miniature. This is one of those fun things where if like you got 10 people in a room and gave them all one of these miniatures and said go, everyone would come back with a completely different looking model. 
all crazy colors, all this. It's the kind of competition I would love to run. And like I've said in the start of this video, I don't know this Felix the crazy guy. I hope he ends up watching the video and he sees the work that I did on his pieces and um, he's quite happy with them. Um, and I hope you guys will jump across, of course, to his Instagram page and stuff like that. And uh, give him a follow, show him some support. Let him know you were sent over here, over there by Mediocre Hobbies. I'm sure he will appreciate it immensely. So back to metallics, just to uh, layer up the bits and pieces again. Like I said, always on the kind of brighter, higher points of the model. Corvus Brack was used to uh, touch up all of the black parts. Same thing as the skin, there's nice defined lines, even in something as smooth as a beak. So it's really easy to go into the Corvus Black and um, add a bit of color and layering to them. And just make it pop, not have it sit there that like completely flat black. Okay, this is the point that I was talking about where I started to introduce the intensity inks. So I'm going to use the Crimson or Magenta intensity ink from Green Stuff World. And we're going to apply that to the skin and you will see quite quickly the difference that it will make um as i said it's an ink so it's going to be slightly glossy and it's going to give us that slight sheen across the piece but it's still going to be quite transparent so all the work we've done on the skin before will be visible through and then we're going to go for the same idea. I didn't quite have the kind of blue intensity ink that I wanted to. So I ended up going for a Veritas green, which is more of like a turquoise. Now hitting the turquoise over the bright blue that we've already done actually gave me a skin tone that I was super pleased with. Um, and I'm more than happy with. So we just quickly applied that and carefully applied that to all of the blue skin on the crew rider. Being careful not to hit any of the brown or pink or anything like that around it. And with that done, I was super pleased with the result. Here is the squad of three I was talking about at the end. Three super cool, gnarly, crew tox riders, super alien looking. Uh, the last thing to do was to add some extra tufts and stuff to the bases. So we quickly applied those, which gave us this result. And I am delighted. To say that the uh, Felix the Crazy has some extra bits and pieces on his site, um, that does mean that this army will grow for me. I want to build a thousand points of pure crude. Um, obviously I will use crude hounds, crude and marlocks from the Games Workshop site, but then I will supplement them with his riders. Uh, maybe one or two of his uh, bigger creatures um, that I am currently in the process of getting printed out. So you should see them on a um, battle report at some point in the near future on my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was something a little bit different for me. Let me know how you guys feel about 3D printing. Um, I want to try to keep it a positive, constructive space. So obviously don't come and rant and shout and scream. I just told you my opinion. I'd love to hear what you guys feel. Um, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you drop it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I put out, I don't know, have four or five videos a week at this stage. So always plenty of content for each and every one of you guys. Um, thank you guys for sticking to the very end of the video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.